Algebra 2 course lesson 2 polynomial arithmetic. In Algebra 1 you became familiar with variables you had X's and Y's and numbers and other letters all mixed up. Here are some of those variables in different forms as what can be called terms. Each one of these letters and numbers grouped together are called monomials. These are called monomials because they are composed of only one term and we'll review this concept throughout the lesson. A polynomial is a type of number where the digits are placeholders for variables to a certain power. In this number, 458, we have the number 8 in the 1's place, we have the number 5 in the 10's place, and we have the number 4 in the 100's place. So this number, 458, is really a composite number of 8 1's, 5 10's, and 4 100's. Now let's look at the polynomial 4x squared plus 5x plus 8. As an item of vocabulary, we call this expression a trinomial because it has three terms. The three terms here are separated by two plus signs. It takes either a plus or minus sign to separate terms of polynomial. In the case of this number or polynomial, we have 8 in the 1's place, just like in our 458 at the right. We have a 5 in the x's place, and we have a 4 in the x squared's place. I hope you can see that conceptually polynomials are very similar to numbers with different places. In fact, if we know that the value of x is 10, 4x squared would be 400, 5x would be 50, and 8 would be 8, for a total of 458. But x does not have to be 10, it could be 1, 0, negative square root of 3, or any real number. Let's look at this number, 3, negative 2, 7. That's 7 in the 1's place, negative 2 in the 10's place, and 3 in the 100's place. So that would be 300 minus 20 plus 7, which equals 287. I hope you can see this conceptually. Now let's take another number, 3, 1 half, and 7. We have 7 in the 1's place, 1 half in the 10's place, and 3 in the 100's place. And that equals 300 plus 5 plus 7. Where did we get the 5? Well, 1 half of 10 because we're in the 10's place, and that would be 5. So the total value of the number is 312. What we learn from these two examples is that while in numbers we can only have positive numbers, holders, polynomials can have negative numbers, fractions, irrational numbers, and even numbers greater than 9. Let's look at this polynomial. 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 thirds. We couldn't do this with whole numbers because of the minus sign and the fraction. Now let's look at this polynomial, 5x cubed plus the square root of 7x. Here we have a 0 in the x squared's place and also a 0 in the numbers place since we see no x squareds or numbers in this polynomial. So we could say this polynomial is 5x cubed plus 0x squared plus square root of 7x plus 0. And we see that we can have an irrational number, in this case the square root of 7. Let's look at this polynomial, 4x squared plus 11x minus 19. A polynomial can have coefficients greater than 9. With a number, any coefficient greater than 9 must be carried over. For instance, in a number, this 11 would have to be a 1 carried over to the left, leaving a remaining 1 in place. There is no carrying over with polynomials. We'll add these two polynomials, the four-term polynomial, 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 6x minus 9 plus the trinomial quantity, 4x squared minus 8x minus 3. If you were listening carefully, I said the word quantity. In algebra, when we say the word quantity, we mean that what we say after the word quantity will be inside parentheses. You'll be hearing that word a lot later in this lesson and throughout this course. We'll look at a couple different techniques of adding polynomials. To add these polynomials together, we can place one polynomial on top of the other. And just like when we add numbers, we need to line up the place values properly. Since in adding or subtracting polynomials we don't carry over, it doesn't matter where we start adding. So we can start with 3x cubed. And since there's only one x cubed term, we can bring it down. Next we have 2x squared plus 4x squared, which equals 6x squared. 
then we have 6x minus 8x or 6x plus negative 8x and that equals minus 2x. And finally we have negative 9 minus 3 which is negative written in the expression as minus 12. Now having added the polynomials we will check our work, a crucial step we will do whenever possible throughout this and other lessons. I recommend using the number 10 for the variable to check. The number 10 makes the arithmetic easy. So here are the numbers with 10 substituted. These numbers add to 3568. Now we do the same thing with our answer. And that also equals 3568 check. Let's talk about what this means. It means that these things, these two polynomials added together, are equal or equivalent to this polynomial added up below 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2x minus 12. So we can box in our answer is correct. This brings up our next vocabulary item, expression equivalency. When two algebraic expressions have the same value, we say that they are equivalent expressions. They are not equal, but equivalent. Equivalent means equal value. In most of our checking in algebra, we will be looking for expression equivalency to assure us that we have a correct answer. Let's look at this one. We have the trinomial 2x cubed plus 6x plus 2 minus the trinomial 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. Did you notice that I didn't say quantity this time? It was because I described it as a trinomial, so verbally I gave enough information to enclose each trinomial inside parentheses. One thing we need to look at is that whenever we have a negative sign or a number outside a set of parentheses, that number or sign applies to all terms inside parentheses. So this minus or negative sign out in front of the second trinomial applies to every term inside the parentheses. I like to draw these little green arcs or to show that operation. And this is what we get below. Note that all the signs within the parentheses were reversed. If it was negative, it became positive, and if positive, it became negative. This brings up another important word of vocabulary, the distributive property of algebra. A number multiplied by a sum of numbers equals the number multiplied by each number of the sum when added together. Now instead of putting one row above another, we're going to place all six terms in one horizontal line. But before doing that, we're going to pick out the like terms. We have two x terms, 6x and minus 3x, and we also have these two number terms that are like terms 2 and 2. So we have 6x minus 3x equals 3x, and we have 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now we can bring down everything. We bring down the 2x cubed, we bring down the minus 4x squared, we bring down the 3x, then we bring down the 4. So now we have our completed answer 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x plus 4. And just as we did earlier, we'll check using the number 10 for x. We get 1,634 for our original expression. Then we check our answer by also substituting 10 for x. We get 1,634 also, just like our original expression. And now we've proved our answer correct, having checked for expression equivalency. So we can box in our answer is correct. When it comes to adding polynomials, I include subtraction of polynomials, like the last problem as well, with the understanding that subtraction is really just the addition of a negative number or term. Now we'll discuss multiplying polynomials. We should remember from elementary school that multiplying is really just repeated addition. We're learning to multiply quickly. Let's look at this multiplication problem. We have 439 times 282. Let's look at these two digits, the 3 on the top and the 2 on the bottom. Because there are places, we should realize that these numbers are 200 times 30, which equals 6,000. And is there anywhere else that we can have thousands? Yes, this 8 on the bottom times this 4 on the top. And that would be 400 times 80, or 32,000. Now we'll look at multiplying in algebra. We multiply a monomial by a monomial. We'll multiply these monomials, 2x squared and negative 4x. To multiply monomials, we need to multiply number by number and place value by place value. 
Number times number is 2 times negative 4 or negative 8 and place value times place value is x squared times x for x to the third power or x cubed. So the product of these two polynomials is negative 8x cubed. Let's look at this problem. We have the trinomial 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 times the binomial 3x minus 6. How do we know it's times? Uh, because parentheses next to parentheses with nothing in between means times or multiplication. A number next to a letter is also multiplication. In algebra we get away if we can from using the x for multiplication sign because we save x for use as a variable or unknown. We can do it like we learned in elementary school. We take this value negative 6 and multiply it first by 4. Then we have negative 6 times negative 5x then negative 6 times 2x squared plus 3x times 4. Then add 3x times negative 5x plus 3x times 2x squared. Multiplying these monomials together we have negative 24 plus 30x minus 12x squared plus 12x minus 15x squared plus 6x cubed. We have the like terms 30x here and 12x here. And then we also have the like terms negative 12x squared minus 15x squared and that equals minus 27x squared. And we can bring down the negative 24 and bring down the 6x cubed. In algebra there is a convention that the terms are written with the highest exponents first then descending from the greatest to the least so our answer is 6x cubed minus 27x squared plus 42x minus 24. We get out our calculator to check using the value of 10 for x. And we see that both of these expressions are equivalent. Check. So we box in our correct answer. Let's look at this problem. We are doing the common algebra problem of multiplying two binomials together. We have quantity 3x plus 4 times quantity 4x minus 6. In Algebra 1 do you remember seeing something like this? This is sometimes called FOIL for first, outside, inside, last to account for every term in each binomial to be multiplied by every term in the other binomial. In this problem first would be 12x squared, outside would be negative 18x, inside would be 16x, and last would be negative 24. From there, negative 18x plus 16x is minus 2x. And we can bring down the 12x squared and minus 24 as they are. This is as far as I want to go with the FOIL method today. If you have learned this well in Algebra 1 and it works for you, go ahead and use it. But for the remainder of this lesson and of this course, I intend to go FOIL free. People ask me why I don't like FOIL. Two reasons. First, it doesn't have the versatility of other methods since it will only work with binomials times binomials. And secondly, other methods, including the box method we'll be introduced to next, work better for factoring, which we shall see in Lesson 3. For the box method, we construct a box according to the types of polynomials we are given. For a binomial times a binomial, we have a 2 by 2 box that separates into four cells. We place the terms for one binomial on the top of the box and I've placed 4x and negative 6 on the top. And on the side we place the 3x and the 4. In the upper left cell we place the product of 3x and 4x which is 12x squared. In the upper right cell we place the product of 3x and negative 6 which is negative 18x. In the lower left cell we place the product of 4 and 4x which is 16x. In the lower right cell, we place the product of 4 and negative 6, which is negative 24. We then combine like terms 16x and minus 18x. And that is negative 2x, so we have as our answer 12x squared minus 2x minus 24. And using 10 for x to check our answer, we have these expressions with 10 substitute for x as shown. And since 1,156 equals 1,156, we know we have a correct answer. Check. So we can box in our answer as correct. 
Here are some additional problems for you to work out. I invite you to stop the video, then work out these problems, then restart the video to see how you did, and also to learn through analysis of the answers. Here are all the problems worked out using the box method. The correct simplified answers are shown. And just to assure you, I checked all these answers. Let's analyze the multiplication of these two binomials, quantity x plus 3 times quantity x plus 4. Whenever all the terms in the polynomials are positive, so all the terms in the trinomial answer like, like this one, x squared plus 7x plus 12, will also be positive. And now this problem, quantity x minus 5 times quantity x minus 3. In the answer, because there are two negative numbers, there will be a negative x term like this minus 8x and a positive number, as in this plus 15, since two negative numbers multiplied together will be a positive number. And for this one, quantity x plus 6 times quantity x minus 3, there is a plus 3x as in as the x term because the numbers 6 and negative 3, the positive number 6 is greater than the absolute value of the negative number, which is 3. And of course for the number it's negative 18 because 6 times negative 3 or any positive times negative will also be negative. Now we'll look at quantity x plus 4 times quantity x minus 7. In this one, since the absolute value of the negative number 7 is greater than the positive number 4, the x term will be negative, in this case negative 3x. And of course the number will be negative as in minus 28 here since a negative times a positive is a negative. And now for this one, quantity x plus 5 times quantity x minus 5. This is a special case of multiplying binomials together where the numbers are the same except one number is negative and one is positive. So the x terms in the calculations 5x and minus 5x cancel each other so there is no x term left over in the answer. This situation is called the difference of squares. This is something we'll look at more closely during our next lesson on factoring. We did this analysis to see what happens in certain situations. When you first look at problems like these or any you encounter in algebra, I would like you to develop the habit of analyzing throughout even before you start calculating numbers. If you have a good idea of what an answer should look like, it will make it much easier for you to solve problems accurately. And now we'll look at our final problem in this lesson, quantity x squared plus 3x minus 2 times quantity x minus 5. And for this one, we'll have multiple choice options. I invite you to stop the video and solve the problem, then restart it to see if you got it right. So it looks like our correct answer is C. For all the problems we've gone over, please stop and rewind to review anything you didn't understand. There are many example problems in every Algebra 2 textbook with problems that will reinforce your understanding of these concepts throughout application. Also, your teacher may have resources to assist you. I have YouTube videos finding the products of polynomials and finding products using the box method. Plus, there are many other videos you can find on YouTube and elsewhere that can help. In conclusion, polynomials are nothing more than numbers that have variables as place values. And secondly, we went over the importance of checking work. If you are not in the habit or discipline of checking work, this is the one thing you can do right now that will immediately make a great difference in your success as a student. This has been Algebra 2 Course Lesson 2, Polynomial Arithmetic. Thanks for viewing.